do you have a group of friends that seem to always talk about sports, especially in the football season? And half the time, it sounds like they're talking in, like, Minecraft enchantment tables with some of the stuff they're talking about betting on or what the spread is and all that kind of jazz. Well, if you don't think that your sports vocabulary is up to snuff, let me give you the basic rundown here in the least mansplaining way possible of basic terms of sports betting or some general sports terms. So we'll start out with the money line. This is as basic as you can get. If someone says who the money line is, or the odds, which we will get into odds in a bit, but the money line is just the outright winner. So if there's a game between Iowa State and Cincinnati, and the money line favors Cincinnati, that means the win percentage is more in Cincinnati's favor. Next, we have the over-under. If people say over, under, and then a number, this is what the line or what you would bet on in sports betting, <coughs> and you would pick whether the number of occurrences is either over that set value or under that set value. Oftentimes in sports such as football, there's an over no under for the total number of points in a game, but there have been many of times where me and I've seen other people use over under in real life. So like over under how many trains are going to come by in an hour. Different stuff like that. Just as a fun way to kind of guess an amount in a certain amount of time. Finally, of the big three, we have the spread which is what those plus minus things are with a number next to them. So this is a little bit more advanced and is very confusing. It took me a few days to fully grasp it and me and explain to it like five times. So if you need to rewatch the video, feel free. But I broke out the whiteboard. I hope it's not reversed for you. But here we have a game this upcoming weekend. ISU is a plus five and a half spread. And the reason there's a half point is that way there's no ties. You either win or lose. There's no chance of tying. But back to it. Cincinnati is a negative five and a half. So first off, when you see these, the team that has the negative is the team that is favored to win. And usually these will be in the same number for each team. One will just be a plus and one will be a minus. So you can think about the plus as ISU will not lose by more than five and a half points. And that can be confusing at first. So we'll go through a couple of examples. But with a plus, this team, you're betting or picking that this team will not lose by more than this value. So if it was Iowa State plus three, then you could say they wouldn't lose by more than three. And that can include them winning. It's just you win if they don't lose by more than five and a half. And it's the opposite for the negative. So for Cincinnati, the negative, you can read it as Cincinnati has to win by more than five and a half. Because what these plus and minus signs are is you take the final score of the game and then you manipulate that team score that you picked to get your final result. 
so let's say the game ended 24 to 16. Iowa State won 24 to 16. And you picked, usually you only pick one of these two. It wouldn't make sense to pick both. So you would pick, let's say you did pick Iowa State plus five and a half. So what you would do is you would add five and a half to their score, which brings the final game result to 30 and a half to 16. And as long as, oh, that should be a plus. As long as this final score after the spread manipulation still beats the other team's score, then your pick would win. So this is a scenario where the, you picked the plus and it won. Now let's do a scenario where you picked the plus and it lost. Or better yet, we'll show you the power of the spread. Say ISU lost the game overall 21 to 24. But you picked the plus five and a half, which brings their score to 26.5 to 24. So the result is still ISU winning the game after the spread manipulation. This is called covering the spread. So if you had picked Iowa State spread in this scenario, your pick would still win. Now let's say in this same scenario you picked Cincinnati and you picked minus five and a half. You apply the spread manipulation and the result of the game is 21 to 18 and a half. So because after the spread manipulation your team has less points than your pick of Cincinnati five and a half minus five and a half ended up in a loss. So your pick would not have won. <coughs> so this is kind of a way Cincinnati to visualize, sorry. This is a way to visualize the minus means has to win by at least five and a half. So you can imagine if the score was 21-27, then, then your pick would have won because it would have been ISU 21 to Cincinnati 21 and a half. So I won't write out some of the other examples, but it all follows the same principle. And that spread. It's a long explanation, and I hope I didn't sound too condescending during it. And if you have any further questions, let me know. But the final thing that we will talk about is the odds. So if you hear someone say, to preface this, I use American odds because I'm in America. There's decimal and there's fraction odds too. And you can convert between them, but most people around my circle use American odds when they talk. So if you hear someone say what they got a pick at, so like every pick, money line, over, under, and spread, all have odds associated with them. So if you were to place a bet on a sports book, the amount of money you would place 
determines how much you would win, but also the odds determine the odds determine how much you would win. So the odds are going to be less in your favor if you pick a team that is heavily projected to win. So the negative odds are a bit harder to calculate what exactly you would win, but in general there's also plus and negative odds. Sorry if that was loud. So plus and negative. This is still ISU Cincinnati. This is their money and line odds as of right now. So you can this is the price you would get. You can think of the plus as at minimum doubling your money. So this the easiest way to think about it for plus odds is if you bet a hundred dollars, this is how much you would win in profit. So if you bet a hundred dollars on ISU and you're bet one, then you would win a hundred and eighty dollars profit. So you would get your hundred dollars back that you bet, as well as an additional one hundred and eighty. So <coughs> that's the way to think about that. Negative just means that that bet is more likely to actually occur, so you're going to be getting less money. And there's a formula to calculate. It's not as straightforward as just looking at it and doing the 100, you win 180 thing. There's a bit more math and fractions that I don't know off the top of my head, but you don't need to know that. The only thing that is important to know in understanding the conversation is that when it's negative, you will not be at least doubling your money. So if it was one I know off the top of my head, if it was negative 110 and you bet $10, that's a weird looking 10. If you bet $10 and you bet one, then you would win $9.09. So there's not really a super great way to convert it, um, but negative odds means above a 50% chance for that bet to win. Positive odds means under 50% chance for your bet to win. So that is where the positive and negative odds come in. So something you may hear someone say when talking about, um, let's say, the ISU versus Cincinnati game, you might hear someone say, I got ISU plus five and a half for negative 110. So that means they got Iowa State spread plus five and a half at negative 110 odds. And with the spread, covering the spread means that it was within that point window and did not cover the spread it means the result was not in that point window. But this is a pretty general overview of kind of the main things of sports betting and also um, just talking about it on some of the mostly NFL uh, pregame shows and stuff. It'll say like plus three and a half or whatever the spread is. So now you will know what exactly that means. And I hope you can feel a little bit more comfortable in any of the conversations that you end up being in about this. And... If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. I will try my best to answer them. And enjoy the rest of the football season. Basketball and hockey are coming up. Baseball is wrapping up. It's, it's a good sports season. So, with that, if you stuck around this long, 
you're a trooper and you're devoted to learning and I appreciate that so thanks for sticking around and I will see you in the next one